So tell your neighbor for me, finish strong. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to get you to do some exercise right now. Praise God. Take a deep breath. In. Out. In. Out. Because you're about to jump up on your feet and look for five people. Five people you have not talked to today at all. Not your wife. Not your daughter, not your friend, not your neighbor. And you look at the person squarely in the face and say, finish strong. Come on, get up on your feet right now. Say, finish strong. Charge somebody this morning. Instruct somebody this morning. Encourage somebody this morning. I want to feel the fire in this house. Say, finish strong. People are still on the same spot. Somebody has not moved from his seat. Somebody is still speaking to herself. Say, finish strong. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27 to 31. I'm reading again from the message translation. How many of you have read this part of the scripture since Sunday? I think this is a good season to read the scripture again and again and meditate on it. Why would you ever complain, oh Jacob? And you know, right now, what's the Jew you put in your name? Right? Right? Amen. Why would you ever complain? I didn't really. Or wine. Oluto Milayo. How many of you know that's my second name? <laughs> Saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. As creator of all you can see or imagine. If you want emphasis on this scripture, you're going to have to listen to the message from last week. Amen. But for some of you already, you have already, you already take this flight with me. Because as I'm reading this scripture, there are emphasis again. Hallelujah. But to help somebody, amen, you cannot say he's not conscious of what is happening. If I is conscious of everything that is happening to you, every minute detail. He cares. And he doesn't come and go. People come and go. People fail. People pass. People stand. People miss it for you. But you serve a God that lasts. He st- Do you understand? You cannot exhaust him in any way. Hallelujah. And he's the creator of all you can see and imagine. So that means even the things that you have seen physically right now. And the things you're still praying for. The things you're still walking towards. Amen. He's the creator of what? All things. Hallelujah. It doesn't get tired out. Doesn't pause to catch his breath. He knows everything inside out. He energizes those who get tired. Gives strength to drop out. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. Hallelujah. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. Hallelujah. That's a good place to celebrate. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run. They don't get tired. They walk. They don't lag behind. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Return this service over to you in the name of Jesus. I only stand as your oracle. I only stand as your representative. I turn over my faculty, my thinking, my expressions, my speaking to you in the name of Jesus. Let all that you have ordained for this moment be established in the name of Jesus. All you have ordained for this service be established in the name of Jesus. Touch everyone the way only you can in the name of Jesus. Inspire the way only you can in the name of Jesus. Lift our burdens, Jehovah. Over here, deliver, encourage, refresh, strengthen. Show yourself strong in the name of Jesus. I declare, let up a light. Let up a light. Let up a light. For in Jesus' name I pray. Can you say a bigger amen this morning? Praise God. So I started last week and I gave you two instructions. The first one. Always start when it is finished. Hallelujah. Always. Somebody say always. 
Somebody say always. You are crying always. You are discouraged. You're tired. You're just waking up. You get through to half of the day and you realize that you have not been conscious of the power of the cross. You do what? It's that point to start. So always start when it is finished. Focus as much as possible on the power of the cross. And don't take for granted the gift of salvation. Hallelujah. And what Christ has made available to you. So if you want a full recap, like I said last week, I can't do justice to that. But how many of you since last week have been conscious? The salvation of Jesus. The fact that you are starting everything that you start on the note of victory already. You have all that you need for life and godliness. Amen. You have the greatest deposit on your inside. So every other payment that is coming, things are already settled. Amen. Praise God. Other people are starting out thinking of what the end is going to be. You were already settled in the end. You just have the privilege to come and restart. Hallelujah. So all Always start with what? I can't hear you. Always start with what? And then I charge you secondly. What did I say last week? Hallelujah. That's what somebody can remember. Who stepped out this week? Somebody stepped out on Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody started that project. Somebody sent out that proposal. Amen. Somebody had a conversation with your husband or your wife. Just keep a straight face. I'm not talking about you. Amen. But some conversations went on last week, right? Somebody started that course, but step out. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm still on that this morning because as I kept on meditating, the Holy Spirit said something to me. And I'm just going to say it as the next instruction. As you step out, you step up. Mm, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you want to understand the context in which we're speaking, when we talk about step out, you're not stepping out to do what you will be able to do typically. Amen. You're stepping out to chew in such a way that what you're about to chew, you cannot chew by yourself. God has to help you chew it. Right? So you're not just stepping out and saying, I wake up in the morning and when I woke up, I don't feel, I don't feel like getting up. I'm just so tired. So I now pushed myself as Pastor D said, I just stepped out and I got off of my bed and I went to work and I carried my daughter to school and I came back. No, amen. It's not that kind of stepping out that I'm talking about. Remember last week I told you, step out afraid. Step out broken. Step out bruised. Amen. Step out with the devil telling you, it's not people like you in the States that does this kind of things. You still what? Step out. Remember I said, take your time. Establish. Clarify. What will God have me do with my life? And Pacheco still emphasized it this morning. If you don't have your purpose clearly written in two statements in this church. I want to say raise your hand. But I'll be very civil and respectful. But I I told Pashego something. Before some people told him last week. I handled marriage counseling. And honestly... Maybe if I've handled 20 couples in this church, eh? I have, it's not past Marco. I have only two people out of 20. I'm doing ratio now. That have ever come into that office and I say, what's your purpose statement? And they tell me. And we have all, some of you have been here two years, one year, five years, 10 years, 13 years. You have not taken time to write the vision. Make it plain. That he that run mighty. And it's for you to push mentally and push spiritually. It does not have to be final. You will adjust. I remember there was a time. So what do we say? You have a word, right? You have a word we can define you by. Max 2. I am a helper. I am a financier. I am. Somebody borrow me what your own label is. I'm a coach. Pishex is a coach. But me, I'm not a coach. You. Right? Me, I'm a very soft, somebody, fun, loving. I can't be tough. But so, initially when I started, I said, I'm a helper. 
That's who I saw myself to be. I help my children. I help my husband. I help his city members. At times, I put down my own load. I carry you people's load on my head. Am I lying? <laughs> it's like that. Then I realize I'm not just a helper. And then I realize what I love is, I love to be in the mix and make things happen. If it's possible, I won't come on this stage. I only come on this stage because God will have me come on this stage. I can be backstage and make things happen and arrange things for people. Do you understand? I love to make relationships better. I love for somebody to start a career from the beginning and the person becomes a high flyer. Do you understand? I love to ensure that my husband looks good, my husband is doing well, my children are doing good physically, emotionally, spiritually. Right? I love to help people bring out the best in themselves. So I realize, and at the same time, I teach. I speak. So I realized I am a facilitator. But it took me like two or three years ago to discover that. Because all that I do, whether I'm cooking, you've heard Pasek talk about my cooking, right? Whether I'm encouraging, whether I'm calling, do you understand? Whether I'm speaking to you, whether I'm encouraging, what am I doing? I am facilitating you, facilitating your growth, facilitating your well-being. Whether I'm organizing an event, what am I doing? I am facilitating. Do you understand? So once I'm in your life and I'm not facilitating something, I check myself. Because what? I have defined myself. I heard clearly and then I've been able to apply it and write it down. I am derivative for my notes this morning to deal with this uh, because I'm about to charge you that please, I beseech you with the message of God. See me using KJV English. In the next one week, take time and document your purpose statement. If organizations that are not under God's mandate, are documenting their purpose and vision statement. You cannot afford to keep living because you are more important to God than some of those multi-billion multinationals. I tell you. But if you see yourself powerful in the hand of God, document it. It might not look like it. Hallelujah. And what do I do? I inspire people to reconnect with God and make the most of life. Finish. So you cannot be in my life and not be at your best. If I'm still taking it easy with you, it's because we are still at the beginning of our journey. Amen. Hallelujah. Immediately I spoke, somebody looked down. <laughs> because this morning as I was leaving first service, I told somebody, follow me. Follow me. Now. For, you understand? Few minutes of conversation. We do not shout too much. Why have you not done this? I need you to do this. Blah, blah. Bye-bye, be going. Why? You have to, to make the most of life. But I inspire. I don't force you. I don't make you feel uncomfortable. I don't make you feel out of your own skin. I don't make you, do you understand? It's just for you to observe, listen to me. Do you understand? Play with me. Have fun with me. And what? Make the most of life. Amen. Before we know it, you are the best mother around. You are the best wife around. You are the best woman around. The best man around. Amen. The best leader around. Amen. I'm going to take time this week to write my purpose statement. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. People are giving their lives right now. I'm going to take time this week to write my purpose statement. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. So by the time you have clarified that this is what God will have you do, you can't afford to settle for less. And there are seasons that you get to in life that you don't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. Hallelujah. But we charged ourselves last week. What do you do? You step out. You put the feelings aside. You put the questions aside. Hallelujah. And why do I say as you step out, you step up? You need to see beyond yourself to break out of your comfort zone. <laughs> I told you to break out of comfort zone last week, right? But you need to see beyond yourself to break out your, your comfort zone. Because you would always have justifiable reasons why you should not. Why you cannot. Why you have not been able to meet that deadline. Especially giving up on the things that God has called you to do. You see, eh? <laughs> when we Christians are stressed. And I intentionally say we Christians. I... I'm in this WhatsApp group too. 
I'm learning. We are all learning together. Somebody is laughing at me. But let me, you know I like to be down to earth. I will tell you my secrets. Amen. The first thing that you, we begin to rationalize is ministry and the work of God. Amen. Encourage me. Don't leave me alone here. Am I saying the truth? So I remember I tell the people that I work with. Let me, I'm, going, I'm not going to say her name. But I put her on the spot. She was just saying, Pastor D, eh, blah, blah. So she's one of the leaders in kids' zone. Hey, I'm just dressed and work and business. So she's an entrepreneur. She's a business owner. Um, and then she works. She works for a multinational. So I was like, oh, we need to do this. We need to do this. Pastor D. Pastor D. And then she turned to Yoruba. I'm not going to say what she's saying, Yoruba. You know, I'm always delivering. I'm just stressed, alone. <laughs> I'm just over here, go. So I told her, I said, please take your time and analyze. Out of all the stress that you are going through, which one, which percent is God's stress in your life? This work of ministry that we're together, that I've taken my time, I've documented their system, their structure. Please, how much time does it take? How well is it stressing you compared to work, compared to your business, compared to your responsibility as a mother, as a wife? Then she stopped and she looked at me. She said, not so much. I said, so, let me begin to remove the faithfulness of God in your life one by one now. Do you understand? Let's remove the edge and let the serpent begin to strike small, small. Then you will know that you calm, calm down. <laughs> Do you understand? We are right. So I said, you can never give stress as excuse for you now not to make impact. Because you don't want to finish at the end of your day and ask yourself, what is my life all about? If others are making money, my life cannot just be about making money. Do you understand? Then if my life is about making money, it's because I'm making billions of dollars in other currencies for me to facilitate the gospel and facilitate. I will ask you how many children have you sent to school? How many schools have you built? How many crusades have you facilitated? Amen. But if what you're doing is waking up, any money, building business, building conglomerate, hallelujah, hallelujah, taking care of yourself, your wife, your daughter, Oh, no, it's just two children we have. Oh, amen. Baba Wale, okay, said that all of us, we should repent. If you have two, you're a sinner. I said, Baba, ah, you'll be trying. So he said, all of you now, minimum four. Ah, that, no, it's that service that I dodged it. He said he went to one place to preach. And the guy said, Baba, this one that you have come to, they don't give children. Because the last time you came, you gave children. Me and my wife were the first partakers. Right now, we had extra. We had two before. Now, we had twins. We now have four. Do you understand? He immediately gave that illustration. As Baba started speaking, I said, I release children. The channels are open, ever are open right now. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I received two duplex in Banana Island. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Two cars, I'm turning it over. Do you understand? But you, your wife, your children, your dog, and your cat. And if you manage, you manage to hurt the teacher. And the reason why you're taking care of the teacher, your children, is because you're selfish. It's not really because you are really particular about them like that. Think, uh, this morning I came to a shatter table. Take me like that. Where I shatter the table, which Bashe will come and rearrange it. Take me like that. But this me, myself, high, round, whatever, whatever, it will not work. Tell your neighbor for me, it will not work. Tell another neighbor for me, not you. It can be another person, but not you. And a lot of times, the only time we begin to now pay attention is when circumstances now touch us. That's when you now start seeking God extra. But right now, pray. I'm trying. Read Bible. I'm trying. I don't even know what to pray about. You don't know what to pray about because you are not in the center of God's will like you should. Step out. Walk on your own water. My water, I'm walking on this water right now. Somebody looked at me this morning and said, I love this Pastor D. 
she understand. I was like, oh, really? I'm trusting God that this pastor is going to remain like this. Because for those that are close to me, they will realize that in the last how many months I've dealt with fatigue. As in, you know, crazy. You will see me lead prayers, preach, minister to you, call, pray, fast. Ah. But it's my husband that knows how every Sunday, before I get into that clothes and come to church, eh? It is with. But I kept stepping out. And this morning I've stepped out again. What is your own stepping out? I am step. I'm walking on my own water, right? You think I'm all that that I'm preaching before? You like lie. Until I land this mic, I'm still wondering, God, have I said it? Have I said your heart? Have I said your heart? Are you doing that every day? Are you having that conversation every day? I am not saying you should keep questioning yourself. I am not saying you should keep doubting yourself. I am saying that if all you are doing right now is all you are comfortable doing and it's not stretching you, and I'm not saying motherhood is stretching you, except if motherhood is your ministry. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you understand me? Except you and God has had conversation. I said, indeed, this is what I will have you do. But that it is not clear like that. Step. Your own life can't just be about you. And one thing I can tell you this morning is you might not be able to make some things happen for yourself right now. But there's a lot that you can make happen for others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might need a word of, from God for myself. I might need some things to shift personally for myself. I remember one time, one of my leaders, I think she's now in Canada. So she, I'm not going to give the testimony fully, but she shared the testimony with me and I kept on declaring. I said, yes. This is the testimony I want to hear. And guess the next thing she said about the phone passionately. She said, Pastor D, I want you to share your testimonies with me too. Shout out, Nicola, Mama, share testimony. You are praying, you are pushing, you are everything. I called her name in full. I said, that is my calling. Do you understand? By the time God wants to sort me out, he's not going to check with anybody. Do you understand? But I'm not going to check with my feelings, check with how comfortable I am to step out and stand in my calling. Do you understand? So as long as you are not okay, and God has called you to me and called me to you, I'm going to stand in the gap. Do you understand? I'm going to intercede. I'm going to speak. I'm going to prod. I'm going to encourage you until you come out of that season and you come out better. And I love the fact that there are testimonies all around me. Do you understand? So fatigued or not fatigued, like I said, I kept stepping out because I knew it's not by power, it's not by might. Lord, I kept on checking. Do you understand? Is this my calling? Am I supposed to be in ministry? I am I supposed to stand before people? Am I supposed to be in of your children spiritually? If I spiritual and body, that is what God will have me do. As long as that is what God will have me do, I give it back to him and I give my all. So my all does not have to be perfect. My all does not have to be good enough. Do you understand? But I'm going to keep stepping out. And the more I step out, the more I see God breathe on the little that I do. And he grows. Do you understand? The more I stand to speak, the more I enter a place, I see the presence of God call the people. Hallelujah. The more I believe God for children, the more I see God give babies to people. Hallelujah. The more I believe God for people, I have seen people faced with death like that. Terrible doctor's report. Hallelujah. And all I have to do is to put my head between my thighs and say, Father, mercy. In the name of Jesus, I cannot lose him. I cannot lose her. I cannot lose him. I cannot lose her. Hallelujah. And I've seen doctor's reports turned around. I have seen doctor. Ah, nobody can tell me that there is no God. Nobody. Do you understand? Nobody. I have seen doctor's report that shake me to my marrow. When you are talking to me, in case you people are here, you, I will be calm in that office. I see what you're saying is not shaking. It's shaking me. Oh. As in very well. At times I will cry. But she will say, why are you crying? I said, this is what so, so, so and so told me. But what does the word of God say? I keep declaring what, declaring what, declaring what. Till you come back and you tell me 
that they looked for the lump, they cannot find it. They looked for the cancer, they cannot find it. They looked for the tuberculosis, they cannot find it. They looked for this growth in my baby, they cannot find it. My baby is no longer misbehaving, hallelujah. Some people will tell me that my children are temperamental. Do you understand? In kids zone, please report them to me. If anybody gives you negative feedback about any child, let me digress. Come and report them to me. I tell them, there's any negative feedback, you give it to me. There's positive feedback, sing it to the parents. Sing, sing it. As in, in fact, send them text messages. If it's a negative feedback, you don't have any business giving it to any parent, give it to me. Do you understand? Let's process it. You, you get me? And I remember somebody a few weeks ago. And then, you know, she, they always say a child is temperamental. I said, no, you have a strong child. She has a strong personality. She's a leader. She's special, unique. You don't touch her. You don't complain about her. She's my own. I don't know if you understand. Because there's what I see that others cannot see. And then recently she was speaking again. She changed the school. And then she was saying, yeah, the teacher is saying this. I called her name in full. I said, we are in a new environment. They need to adapt. If you start complaining, then they will complain. What bad be? Let's see how for who God has called her to be. Then she looked at me straight in the eye. She said, study my church gets it. Why can't my daughter's school get it? I said, because we are called to step out. What is it that God has given to you to get that other people around you, if they try extra, they cannot get it? Step out. Step out. You have the power to make wealth. As being you, when you touch any business, it just, things just multiply in your hand. Do you understand? Thinking on the feet. I call some people professors. Why are you? You are still trying to think, ah, ah, they have gotten it. Do you understand? Hallelujah. You city leaders. Those people. That when Pashego give us quiz. Eh? Eh? We, we are still trying to see. how Me, it's because I, I just around. I've been in this vision since now. And we are sleeping on the same bed. With all the sacrifices I'm making. I have to pass now. But some of them, without winking, they have gotten 2020. That your intellectual capacity is for something. You need to stretch it for the kingdom and do what? And as you step out, God multiplies your impact. Amen. God blows your mind. So if it's been a long time that you have recorded a miracle, I have shared my testimonies this morning. Do you understand? And I see the girl I'm talking about one day on the corridor. She just ran towards me. Pastor D and hugs me tightly. Ah, hug okay. If you're trying to hug her, she's moving like, don't hug me. I don't express affection. I don't, I, with me, you express affection, emotion. We're all emotional beings. Do you understand? And that is how I'm going to keep sharing our testimonies. What is your own? Because God is saying, like he said to Abraham, ah, you know that's how he did God. Abraham, do you understand? Touch God in a place. God said, ah, ah, I will bless you. And in this 2023, in the name of Jesus, I know that you have been pained. I know that you have been broken. I know that you have been disappointed. I know that you have excuses. But if you're going to lay aside those excuses and push, ah, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Ah, the works of your hands is multiplied in the name of Jesus. It looks as if you have recorded success before now. It looks as if you have made it before now. You made it out of one business school before now. But God is saying, I'm about to take you on greater platforms in the name of Jesus. You have made some targets before now. But God is saying, I'm about to multiply it in the name of Jesus. I'm about to give you exponential increase in the name of Jesus. Don't hold back. Step up. Because as you step out, you step up. As you step out, you step up. In the name of Jesus, step out. Step out crying. Step out struggling. Step out tired. Step out flat out. Amen. There are times I'm about to hold meetings. Amen. Five minutes to the meeting. I'm trying not to cry. I'm praying the Holy Ghost. I'm praying the Holy Ghost. I'm like, God, help me. I have an agenda, but I don't have the emotional strength to pull this. But what do I do? I step out. And everybody, when we're done in the meeting in one hour, everybody says, wow, Pastor D, fantastic. Tell your neighbor for me, step out. So if I'm stepping out, you are stepping out, that person is stepping out, the other person is stepping out, what's going to happen? 
Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man. What God has in stock for you. Are you stepping out? Are you stepping out? Are you stepping out? I don't know what you're dealing with. You know, I said always start with it is finished. And if you remember the hymn was sung first last week. Can you remember? If I don't do my second point today, I land with this and we are good. Amen. Can you remember the hymn? My faith has found a resting place. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died. So you people want to disgrace me. How many of you know that I used to be a worship leader? Ah, if you laugh. Ah, Mr. Lesson, God bless you. I owe you. What do I owe you? I give you. So you, some people are doing a procura right now, laughing at me. But Shegu killed my music ministry. May God forgive him. With tact and wisdom. Somebody was speaking last, I think we had a shoot. It was Luben. Luben said, your husband is a very wise man. How many of you know Pasheg is a very wise man? Very wise. Now allow me to blow my own trumpet. Or blow his trumpet. Very wise. Very wise. The kind of wisdom that God has given him. It's very wise. So there's just a way, eh, don't you think you should step up to other things? Don't you? I, I, I can't sing. I'm a singist. Me and I in fellowship that time. I, my MD would have given me song. If I tell you some songs I have sung. Songing, songing. And the anointing will fall all over the place. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I said, me. Shori, as long as you are hearing some people and they are sounding better than you, Leave singing. Leave singing. I've left it. I've left it now. You are disgracing me. <laughs> so that Pasha could be able to look at this video and say, I told you, you don't have music ministry. Hallelujah. Let's look for key. Because I want to go emphasize that song again this morning. Hallelujah. It's the right key, right? We're singing it. One person. Amen. And God will have me emphasize to somebody again this morning. Pastor, I don't have that degree yet. Step out. Pastor, I've not felt like myself lately. Step out. I'm so fatigued. I'm so pained. I'm so heartbroken. It is enough that Jesus died. And that he died for me. That you're going to take, but you're going to start from the place of victory that Jesus Christ has given you. You are enough. In fact, you're more than enough. Hallelujah. You're more than enough. And then as I studied during the week, I realized that the author of the aim, let's have the text up, is often listed. That's the, the author of this hymn that we just took right now. Media, walk with me. The author of the hymn is often listed as Lady H. Hedmonds. The pen name is Eliza Edmonds Hewitt. Hewitt was born on June 28. You can keep playing softly, very softly. June 28, 1851 in Philadelphia. Upon graduation, she became a teacher. But shortly thereafter, suffered a severe spinal problem when a student struck her with a heavy slate. She was an invalid for the remainder of her life. Even though she was able to partially recover, she continued to live in Philadelphia and turned to him writing. How many of you can see that point where she stepped out? So she was a teacher. That's all she had known to do. And then she had a, an accident. It was not even her fault. And God is meant to be faithful. That impact 
could have had less, you know, devastating effect on our life. But spinal problem because of a student hitting you with a heavy slate. So the next line says she was a regular contributor to various Sunday school publications. She also served as a Sunday school superintendent for a church and home for orphaned children. One can only imagine how our own experiences inspired the faith and lyrics for this song, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. Hewitt is well known for a number of other hymns, including When We All Get to Heaven. Do you know those hymns? Will there be any star in my crown? More about Jesus. Do you know that hymn? Sunshine in my soul. In an article, a great grandnephew, I think I missed that when I was copying out that whatever, described the hymn as the best statement of faith that exists in hymns. What I want to ask you. I don't take for granted your pain or your struggles or your excuses. You might have seen your life on a particular trajectory and is moving in another, do you understand, curse. But put it in the hand of God. Because when you can be comfortable in yourself, when you can be comfortable in your talent, when you can be comfortable in your capabilities, that is still about self. Amen. But she had impact on just a school and a few people. But even though it was supposed to be a tragedy, she was able to take that tragedy and put it in the hand of God. I want to believe that she would have trusted God for healing. I want to believe that she would have sorted for medical help. But all she could get was partial recovery. But the devil lost the more. Hallelujah. I remember some years back when I had health challenges. Hallelujah. And what I told the devil is, you have done your worst. It's okay. <laughs> Do you understand? But even worse is the worst. I will not live long. But before I go down into my grave, I'm going to take as much people as possible with me to heaven. I'm going to impact as much life with my final breath. So keep doing your worst. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can remember two years ago. Um, it's not two years ago. It's this last whatever. Which conference did we have? Who can remind me? Wisdom conference. What people did not know is for like one week, I had not been able to even sit up how much more stand? Do you understand? And is this fatigue? Because it, it stretched for a while. And then I went for my COVID, second COVID shot. I've taken the first one. That time, Bishop used to laugh at us. That this COVID shot, that you, I'm, I'm not taking a COVID shot. Too. I don't, have they finished research? So when the crisis started, I don't even know. They checked everything. No. They did not see anything. Somebody called me from Lagos State. You know, I have people in my life. <laughs> So some Lagos State officials, some people in church reached out to some Lagos State officials and said, you need to look into this, you know, whatever, whatever. And the guy called me and said, madam, if your body can shut down like this, you need to check the level of your stress. Do you understand? But anyway, yes, since then I've learned. That's why the person said he likes this new pastor G. Because now I've learned to take things easy more. Amen. I've learned to take care of myself more. But my system was shutting down. And Patience was already looking for a video to play for Wisdom Conference. Then my girls, when I call my girls, I say, some typical people in New City, but I call them, some of them my girls, they work with me. One of them, a doctor, she will keep on saying, when I say, how am I going to stand up? And she said, Pastor D, you are going, on that Saturday, you are going to stand up average. I remember Helen, I said, I want to buy flat. She said, Olam Maji. She said, in Europe, I said, she said, you will get on your heels. <laughs> you will get on that stage. <laughs> every step and every word you speak, you will speak fire. I said, how? Do you understand? I came that day. They brought me in. I entered the office. I laid flat. I, had to, I can't sit up. Lie flat in my office. 
They prodded me with pillow. And Peter just kept on looking at me like, is it you that you're going to preach like this? I say yes. Because I kept on checking in my heart, what will God have me do? What will God have me do? What will God have me do? When they said it was five minutes to time, because I can't sit down here for too long. They said it was almost time. So they brought my shoe. And I think it was that shiny blue shoe. Abby, they brought it. They lifted me up. Then I carried myself. Then I stepped. And when I stepped out, I saw one person say, thumbs up, Pastor D. So another person, thumbs up, Pastor D. Then I walked down. I walked in. I entered here. I sat down. I could still feel the pain. Then I got on this stage. I managed. I climbed up. If you remember the first thing I did when I was trying to speak and I I just broke down in tears. Because honestly, I couldn't believe that it was me that was standing here. How many of you were blessed that day? But beyond that, a lot of people even sent messages to their friends and said, you know what? Pastor D blessed me. Amen. That day, Jen went off. I, I, I kept on speaking. I decree in the name of Jesus that the same way Elijah guarded his lungs, guarded his strength, and outran the chariots of hair up in the name of Jesus. That in this dispensation, they have said you are a wonderful father before now, but you are about to break boundaries uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, they have said before now that you are an excellent mother, but you are about to break boundaries uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in this house, uh, if it's not miraculous, uh, if it's not supernatural, then it's not us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we break free of every limit uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, break free of every sickness uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, break free of every negative doctor's reporter in the name of Jesus. I don't know what your family is dealing with right now. I don't know what report your father has, but you are standing as a representative of God in your home because you represent Christ and because you represent Christ you are God in the name of Jesus because that's where I'm going to land it because as you step out it keeps making you realize that you need God more than ever. You need others more than ever. You are able to maximize your relationships. I don't feel I'm all that. Do you understand? I do what I do because there are people that are called with me to do it. Amen. So there are people that I relate with. I'm not a woman of God. Do you, do you get me? Pastor Shegun always tells me in secret, do behave like a woman of God more. Be trying. Do you understand? Be trying. I'm really trying. Am I trying? Am I trying? Some people are not. Oh, you did not answer. You are not trying. Do you understand? But that's you people's own. But the only thing is, remember I went to preach somewhere. And when I got on stage, I was still joking with them, laughing. I was still whatever. Elsie said in her, she said in her mind that, you people don't know anything. When the fire hits you right now, you know that she's not here to play. Do you understand? Because it's not about me. It's about the God that I serve and the people he has called me to serve with. Find your own constituency. Make the most of it and do what? Step out. Because as you step out, you are able to maximize your wife, maximize your husband, maximize your children, maximize the resources about, around you. Most importantly, maximize the resources that God has channeled in your life and you're able to multiply results in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says in John 10, chapter 34 to 38, New Living Translation, Jesus replied, it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say, you are God's. And you know that the scripture cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called God. Are you with me this morning? Are you with me this morning? Who is ready to step up this morning? Why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the son of God? After all, the father sets me apart. See my emphasis. Uh, some people in the scriptures before now, what did he say? First line, let me go back. It says, Jesus replied, it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people. How many leaders? He'll sit to your what? Community of what? Christian leaders. That's what we call you, right? So he said, he's not concerning everybody. He said, I say you are God. And you know that scripture cannot be what? If he said it, you can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. So if those people who received God's message were called God, how many people have a word over your life? How many people have a call over? Come on, I need you to respond to me this morning. 
You have a call. You might not have been conscious of it recently, but you're conscious of the fact that you are called. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, why do you call it blasphemy when I am the son of God? After all, the father set me apart and sent me what? Into the world. Are you sent this morning? Are you stepping out this morning? Stepping out in the grace of God. Stepping out in the wisdom of God. Stepping out in the power of God. Hallelujah. Don't believe me unless I carry out what? So in case your testimony has been found wanting, it's because you're not carrying out your father's work. But if I do his work, ah, hallelujah. Confess with me this morning. Let's read 38 together. Are you ready? Are you ready? Gather your loins. I need us to read it together. I said, but if I do his work, believe in the evidence of the, mi- let's say it together. Believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done. Even if you don't believe me, then you will know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Then you will say that, but this is Jesus Christ. He's the son of God where he can call himself God. Hallelujah. Then I will remind you of John 14, 12 that says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Hallelujah. And they will do even greater works than I have done. Hallelujah. All you have to do is step out and do that work in your father. But Pastor D, it's not a big deal. Step out. But Pastor D is no much step out. I don't want to have as much clarity as, as yet. Start. Amen. Because as you do, the work speaks. It speaks. You press into the supernatural. You call those things that are not as though they were. The things that are impossible for others become normal for you in the name of Jesus. As you step out, you step up. As you step out, you step up. As you show up in your office tomorrow, people see you. But God stepped into that boardroom with you. As you weigh those decisions, you have the thinking capacity of God in the name of Jesus. You have the creative ability of God in the name of Jesus. You are not a mere man. Spirit, soul, and body, you are raised. You are God. Hallelujah. And you are sent, you are sent you are set apart to show God in this generation. We stepping out with me. We stepping up with me. So media is going to put up those words. I remember that this was a woman on a sick bed that stepped out. And today, yes, yes, when she's supposed to be long forgotten, her words are still speaking. The next time you sing somebody's song and it's a blessing to you, remember that that person stepped out. The next time you pick up a high phone, some people that are not even born again in this generation are stepping out and we Christians are giving excuses. Somebody say no more. Your call is not my call. Your wiring is not my wiring. But the little that God has given me, I'm going to step out. I'm going to be excellent at it. I'm going to be dutiful at it. And that little, I will see it multiply in the hand of God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's rise up on our feet this morning. Lay aside everybody. Lay aside every sense of inadequacy. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And remember last week I told you how we wait. We wait by serving. We wait by pushing. We wait. And as we wait upon God, we gather strength in our loins. Because it's not by power. It's not by mind. Hallelujah.